everyone, welcome back. Today we're diving into the core of Eleven Labs, text to speech the feature that made this platform blow up in the first place. Whether you want a voiceover for a YouTube short, narration for a game, or just need a clean way to turn words into realistic audio, this is where the magic happens. Magic. So let me show you how simple it is to use. Click on text to speech from the tabs on the left. Then, what is it you want to say? Or, well, have the voice say. I'm going with this great quote from the movie Meet Joe Black. Next, choose the voice by clicking on the currently selected voice on the right side. You have the option to pick from any of the ones there. At that point, you can hit the play button to hear a short preview of that voice. I just love talking about movies, you know, TV shows, really anything that's in the yard. So use my voice for those kind of projects. Otherwise, you'll have to go to the Voices tab on the left and go through their library and find the one you'd like to use and add it to your voices. You're only allowed so many in your voices at a time, depending on the tier you're paying for or aren't paying for. Free, you only get three. Starter gives you 10 slots, Creator gives you 30, and Pro gives you 160. For the most part, this is all a convenience thing, as you can at any time remove a voice from your voices and replace it with another. But if you want to use a bunch of different voices for different projects, it can become annoying switching them in and out. Anyway, once you have one selected, there are many more options, but first we're just going to go with everything to its default and see how this turns out. Take notice at the bottom of the window where you typed in the text to be voiced. It should show you on the left how many credits you have available. To the right of that, it should show you how many characters the text you typed in actually is, and out of 5,000. 5,000 is the maximum length you can do at any one time, and this does include spaces. Typically, the amount of characters you use is equal to the amount of credits it costs to create the audio. There are exceptions to this with other features from Eleven Labs, but here, the exception is if you are using some of the specific voices that have a dollar sign next to them, which requires a larger amount of credits depending on the individual voice's settings. It's entirely up to you if you feel an individual voice is worth using more credits for. If you're ever unsure how many credits it's going to cost, Mouse over the credits remaining, and it should tell you the current cost versus how many you have left. And I guess with that, it's time to hit generate and see what we get. There's not an ounce of excitement, not a whisper of a thrill. This relationship has all the passion of a pair of tit mice. I want you to get swept away out there. I want you to levitate. I want you to sing with rapture and dance like a dervish. If you're happy with the output, hit that download icon in the bottom right of the window. Or you can always find your output later in the History tab at the top next to the settings. With your first output generated, let's take a look at some of the settings on the right. First option is the model. I never change this, but so you can see what the other options are, here we go. If you read what each of them are, it really comes down to quality versus speed, and sometimes whether a specific language is available or not. The generation speed is so fast with the current model that I see no reason to go faster and pick one of the others. If I was running short on credits, then maybe I'd look at one of them. The only other reason to choose one of the faster models would be if you're using it specifically for conversational AI, like within a game or something through some API so that the response or latency time is minimal. And I have no idea why they keep the old version 1 models available to use still. I guess nostalgia maybe? Actually, there might still be some voices available that only work with the old models. I don't know. Back to the settings. What makes this really flexible are the sliders. These give you control over how the voice behaves. The first slider is for speed. By default, this is set to 1.0. Move it up and the voice will speak quicker. Move it down and the voice will speak slower. The second slider is for stability. The higher you set it, the more stable the audio is between generations. However, it has a higher chance of sounding monotone. The lower, the more expressive it can be. But go too low, and it can become unstable. The next slider is for similarity. The higher you set it, the supposed clarity increases. However, there's always a drawback, which is that it can start to cause artifacts. And finally, we have style exaggeration. You might run into some voices that don't have this option. But this slider exaggerates the voice based on the default of the voice you are using. So if the voice you're using is already very expressive, you might not want to turn this up much at all. But if it's a pretty monotone voice, 
then maybe consider boosting this up quite a bit for your needs. There is one final option that I never turn off, and that's speaker boost. It only improves things and supposedly makes generation slower, but as I stated before, speed has never been an issue for me. Unless it's for one of the other reasons earlier where it might be needed, I see no reason to turn this off. From time to time, there are problems you might run into. Either something isn't being read correctly by the voice, or timing or expression just isn't what you want it to be. Let's look at the timing thing first. I'm going to use this shorter and simpler quote from the same movie. Yeah, be deliriously happy, or at least leave yourself open to be. Maybe it just reads it as it is, and it's okay, but you want specific pauses and timing. There are several ways to do this. Period is the obvious pause, but so is a comma, a shorter pause, but still a pause compared to nothing. There are quite a few other options that have different but subtle effects on this too. You can use a basic hyphen, an N dash, or an M dash. You can also use ellipses. You can even double up on them if you want to exaggerate the pause, but at that point, you might be better off just editing the audio afterward. If you want to emphasize the way something is spoken, you can capitalize a letter in a word to emphasize the specific part of that word. Or you can capitalize the entire word, or multiple words to have them exaggerated more. You can also make good use of exclamation points for this. And they double as a pause, too. Yeah, be deliriously happy, or at least leave yourself open to be. Yeah, be deliriously happy, or at least leave yourself open to be. Now what do you do if the voice doesn't pronounce something correctly, or at least not the way you want it to? The answer is obvious. Spell it out phonetically instead. Maybe you're using the name Sirsha, which, in case you didn't know, is spelled S-A-O-I-R-S-E. So you would probably want to spell out Sirsha, or S-E-A-R-S-H-U-H. Or what about names Wynn, Joaquin, or Hermione? Or good luck with Elon Musk's son's name. The other thing that this can happen a lot with are acronyms. There's the acronym SQL, which already feels weird for me to say it like that, as it's commonly known as SQL. But the voice model may not know that, and there are tons of examples that this could get screwed up with. Though this one most likely works, NASA will most likely be spoken out as, well, NASA instead of N-A-S-A. But you can't expect the model to know which way it is with all acronyms. Or look at JPEG which is spelled either J-P-E-G or just J-P-G, but it's commonly pronounced as, as I said, J-P-E-G. The point is, be prepared. If you have any words or acronyms or initialisms, be prepared to have to spell things out phonetically. And it's better to catch these before you waste credits and instead test the words ahead of time in short sentences. One last thing. If you create a generation and you're just not quite happy with it, you can have two more free generations to see, well, here, different outputs to see if it worked better for your liking. You cannot, however, change any of the text in the text field at all. Even if you just add a period or a space, it will reset and cost credits to generate again. If you're planning to give 11 Labs a try, feel free to use my affiliate link below. It helps support the channel without costing you anything extra. And hey, if you're just feeling kind, I've also got a buy me a coffee link too. No pressure, but every bit goes a long way. And that wraps up the walkthrough of Eleven Labs text to speech. Hopefully this gave you a solid look at how the tool works, how to tweak it for better results, and how to avoid wasting credits on words it absolutely refuses to say correctly. If you figured out any clever tricks for controlling pronunciation or pacing, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Or tell me, what's the weirdest name or acronym you've seen Eleven Labs completely butcher? And of course, please take a second to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, ring that bell, and share this with anyone who's still stuck using flat, lifeless voiceovers. All of that really does help way more than you'd think. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.